welcome back to another World of Tanks episode of Ungainty Titan, and this one is in the ISU 152. I haven't played that in a long time. I actually forgotten that I was still grinding this tank. However, when I'd finished winning the various tanks and actually getting games in them, getting a bit used to them, so that I had the material to do the first uh, first look at. Um, Still two remaining, I think, that I need to. The um, T95E6 and the Panzerwagen 50T. However, the for once, a grind bonus uh, campaign, the on-track on -track campaign, coincided with my actual grind. So I went back to my tier 9s, and there was bonus experience for grinding the... Um, Leopard Prototype A. It was an on track for the Leopard 1, so I took advantage of that and I brought the Leopard Prototype A almost the way up. To the point where it was only a few thousand XP off, but when I was coming back onto my tanks, I um, noticed that I had, what you call it, that I had, oh, the only tier 9s that I have um, in the grind were the ones that I was showing previously the RU251, the Leopard. Prototype A, the um, Skoda T50 and the 50TP, and the only tier 8s I have are the this, the ISU 152 and the Object 416, the Russian Soviet medium, but I didn't like the Object 416, now I might, I said at the time that I was never even going to touch it, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep to that, but I don't have a crew for it at the moment, so I didn't decide not to touch it this time anyway. But I was about halfway through the ISU-152 grind. I thought, you know, I might as well get the ISU-152 grind done. Um, while I have tier, tank, tier 10 tanks to go. I know I have, uh, I'll have to go back and redo um, British Lights now that I've added a bunch of them and stuff like that. Because I want to keep on top of things like that. Although I have no crew for the British Lights. So I brought out the ISU-152, now I'm not sure as I said why I stopped grinding it, because um, the only thing I can think of is that it is a long grind, and it's possible I just got tired of playing it, because it is a bit of a one-trick pony. Now it is a glorious trick, as you can just witness. That was a max style roll, I think. But that stuff, um, that's what this tank is all about really, the big boomstick. When it hits, uh, it just really ruins people's day. Now the bat chat is driven into the lake, I don't know if it actually drowned or was shot. But I don't think you can get out of that lake down at the southern end. I know it's one of the first places I ever drowned in a world of tanks, was reversing a wolverine into that lake, being chased around the bottom of the hill by um, KV-1. That was actually hilariously funny at the time. It, it was pre my video career, so I don't have footage of it, but it was uh, it was it was on the Xbox 360, I think. It was hilariously funny because the KV-1 followed me into the lake and drowned as well. Um, couldn't untangle itself from the side of the lake and the bottom, and my tank at the bottom of the lake. So, we're now here. Anybody going to go up that road is going to get a shock. But we can't push forward. This tank is no good in the knife fight. It turns too slowly and it reloads too slowly. I mean, I think I have a 13 or 14 second reload on it. I think it could be 18 seconds base or something like that. But there's two tanks with fast firing guns. However, if the UDS wants to drive in front of me, I'd be quite happy to oblige him with an obliteration. That puts us a tank ahead. That changes the dynamic somewhat because um, while the Carnarvon is a fast firing gun, I could or should, you know, the Carnarvon really probably should have come after me, uh, try to get around me. Because doing what he's doing, while well, it might be the cautious, careful thing to be doing, is he can't afford to be hit by guys like me. Uh, that's not a trade that he's going to survive another one of them and he's dead and 
paraglides that I'm talking about already now. He picks the wrong tank to shield himself from. And he's dead. Uh, for a second here I thought I was stuck. But now I managed to turn the tank. We get out of it and we just extract ourselves in the corner here. There's nobody else around. Now there's two tank distress has just vanished from view, just going down the two line. There may be a tank destroyer. There's a third tank destroyer around. I don't know where it is right now, but it might be in front of me. But if it is, it's on very low health because it's either the Yak Panther 2, which is probably dead, uh, or the ISU 152, or the SU 152 that was up here. I can't remember which one it was. Either case, I should be. Um, I should be okay. It, doesn't really matter. The, although I would expect, like I said, the artillery to have left the area because it, it would have no support. And if there was a tank destroyer up here, I think I would have spotted it by now. He would have at least shot at me. So, off we go. There's the artillery. It's been spotted by the other tank destroyer. Um, who's going to get the first shot in? And almost, but doesn't quite finish him off. And there's a medium tank coming in as well. I think probably the medium tank finished off the... Uh, no, it was a scorpion. The scorpion finished off the um, artillery. Now, we've managed to hit the striker. The striker's hit me as well. But the striker isn't hanging around for me to reload. Which is probably wise of it. Um, now, yeah, is the Scorpion going to be able to finish the strike? Now, the Scorpion's telling me to stop, but I, I think I need to support the Leopard PTA, and there is an issue on 30 pm. And we fire out a mostly unaimed shot. That was um, basically a hand of Stalin type round. There is our Leopard prototype uh, has been taken out by the chariot here, I think. And I'm not going to get this thing turned. In time for the chariot here to, uh, or me to deal with the chariot here. Now the chariot here just basically bullies the scorpion off the edge of the, the map. And if the striker had stayed up there, the strikers decided to come down behind me, which makes sense at a le certain level. But I knew then my only chance was to come in and bully the chariot here, which I did, um, and just keep driving because I've spotted the striker behind me. Now the striker shoots, hits, and actually scores. And I think the striker made a mistake here. He should have probably kept after me. Uh, he could probably be fast enough to get behind me. And I think he's got a better um, gun art than I do. Because this thing turns like a complete dog. Now I don't really know the characteristics of the striker. So, I'm coming back around after him. But there's no sign of him all the way down here. So he's... He's clearly faster than I am, and he's made it out of here. So what would I do if I was him? Because the thing is, it's to his advantage if he takes me out early. See, I'd be inclined to be waiting down at the next... Either for me to come around that corner at the bottom, or for me to come around this corner and wait for me on the high, th the high ground. But I'm not going to move until the uh, other tank destroyer, which I think is around until the Borsic, is up near me. Because I want, at the very least, if I'm going to die, although I probably should be able to take a shot. Which means he's going to have two shots, which would give the Borsic enough time to get into position to fire. And if he does, the Borsig, he's probably a one shot at the Borsig, he's a one shot to me as well, I think he's only 350 or 400 hit points. Um, so we should be able to put him away. The other thing that he could have done is, he could have run for the Abbey, or he could have run for the southern edge of the map, because if he does either of them, uh, the thing is, to spot us in the as we're searching around here for him, through the windows, to the east and uh, spot us while we're searching around here for him where we can't spot him because the thing is that while the Borsig for instance is fairly stealthy it doesn't have a great view range so if he's got a better view range now again I don't know what the characteristics of the tank he's driving is but if he's got a good view range 
he should easily spot me and probably spot the Borsig before we can spot him. Because as I said, while the Borsig is stealthy, it doesn't have the greatest view range. And I'm not a bit stealthy, and I have a worse view range, if anything. Uh, even with the binoculars, that's a pretty poor view range. Now, nobody's been shot, no shots incoming, nobody's been spotted here. I just give my binoculars a chance to kick off. And we push forward, and we have to do the same thing again, and again. Um, just park here for a moment. I don't want to push out too far, because I don't want to back it up under fire. Okay, the Borsky isn't a one-shot kid, is he? Probably not, 5.59. Not if the die roll that he did to me the last time was average. Um, so we come around the corner here. Although, I suppose if you use a HE on the Borsig, the Borsig would be a one shot kill. Or maybe he's looking at a much higher average die roll than what I thought. Anyway, we'll see. So. So we come on and we're pushing forward here, we're just peeking up, you see. We have six cents as well, like so we can rely on that. But the worst thing that could happen to be here now is if I get push out into the open here and get caught flat footed with no place to hide. And six cents goes off. So six cents didn't go off and I'm coming here to the corner because this is the next obvious spot. Is to wait over there in front of me. So that when I come around this corner, I am uh, he can see me and I can't see him. Six cents still hasn't gone off. But Noctors have just kicked in and I don't see anything. So he doesn't have a line of sight to me up there at the corner. So he could be in the low ground at the other side of the spawn area. Or he could be on the hills to the back of them. Probably not in the Abbey. Because he was in the Abbey and he was looking out this way. I think I'd have been spotted crossing the open ground just to get to that corner to the edge of the hill to come down. And we're spotted. So we back off. I don't know if there's any line of sight now to the end of the map. So he is at the end. He is in uh, J7 or K7. Or possibly K8. Uh, again, and we're spotted again. I'm going to indicate where I think he might be. And the idea would be that the Borsig stays where he is and I come around. The thing is, if he can't face both ways at once, so he's going to have to face one of us. Uh, I don't know what the Borsig is telling me to stop for. Because we more or less know where he is. At least I do. No, I know he doesn't know that. But it should be kind of obvious in my behaviour that I stopped moving forward because six cents had gone up. Yes, if we used headsets and communicated, but we might even speak a common language. So we pull up, push up, push up, push up. Six cents has gone up. It has to be very close. There's not many places in there and they're all really close. They're all less than 200 meters. Um, okay, six cents is enough to Borsig has spotted him. Now, has he shot the Borsig? I wonder. 2382. 282. Alright, Borsig's pushing forward and hang on. He must have hit the Borsig. The Borsig's only got 172 there. Um. I just went back and checked. So he must have hit the Borsig there. And he shoots the Borsig. Yeah, 172 does the Borsig. He shoots the Borsig. If his rate of fire is that quick, he should have turned and faced me. There's no way he should have attempted to run away. He should have turned and faced me, drove, drove, drove towards me. 
maximize the chances of charge me down or at least when I came over the hill charge forward uh, at an angle so we say so that um, I would have had a chance of missing it yeah anyway driving away was the wrong response but it turned out well for me because it got me the top gun it got me an ace tanker I got the high caliber fight well I'd have gotten high caliber I think anyway 5700 points of damage is not something that I do very often ISU 152 became number one by the team I wouldn't have won that game without the Brian Mitchell Borsig so I better um, just thank Trivial Prince for sticking with me towards the end even if he did take the damage now I think he was probably pushing a little hard as well and overall I think that was a very tense game actually towards the end because I really was expecting to be blown away I was pretty certain he had better view range than me and or than either of us really and that if he positioned himself well he could have taken advantage of that and really ended the fight the ISU 152 folks an oldie but a goodie thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please press like, comment, share, it really helps the channel out and if you have not already done so please subscribe to the channel, I will catch you all again soon, bye for now.